To whomever is watching right now, you're doing well, aren't you? I certainly hope so. This is Stephanie from Apex Languages. How excited are you to learn more grammar? Today is our questions wrap up. Wrap up means a summary, a review. It's when you take all the little leftover bits that didn't get covered before and wrap them up together with everything else to present as one beautiful gift. So in other words, today we're going to cover a few random question related topics, including how, ever, and tag questions. We've been working recently a lot with the question words, who, what, when, where, and how. Today, as we wrap up, we'll spend a little bit more time uh, addressing how. Specifically, it's variations, including how much, how many, how often. So first, let's review how we use how. We've got the statement, you do this. First thing is we remember to put in that invisible do, and we switch our subject and verb. So now we've got a question. Do you do this? Keep in mind, the invisible do, the question do is a grammatical do, and that's different from the semantic do, the do that has meaning. So there's two different do's in the sentence. Don't get confused by them. The semantic do, the one that has meaning, means action, right? Okay, something is being created, something is being changed or altered in some way, as opposed to grammatical do, that just helps the sentence, helps our sentence structure. It doesn't add meaning to the sentence itself. Don't get confused by the two do's. We want to introduce how into this sentence. So it's not a yes, no question anymore. Do you do this? Yes, I do. No, I don't. How uh, will give me more options on how to respond. And so traditionally with just my adverb, my question adverb, that goes in front of the do. And so my question is, how do you do this? How often doesn't work alone though. So let's see how it combines with other words to form different types of questions. Got a new sentence for you. You did spend money or you, you spent money. If I add how much, the focus goes from being about yes or no, did you spend anything to how much, what quantity? Did you spend just a little bit of money or should I be mad at you? Okay, uh, with inflection, we would make this a question by saying, uh, you spent how much money? You can hear the anger in my voice, <laughs> okay? Um, well, so if we wanna make this a question first, of course, did you? Let's switch our subject and our verb. Now, let's take a closer look at how much, okay? How does it fit into the sentence? How is still an adverb. It's describing not the verb anymore, but the adjective much. Much as an adjective is describing a noun, money. Together, they're all connected into a single noun phrase. Now, even though the adverb is the first word in that phrase, the noun is the most important part of it. This noun phrase is actually a direct object. It's the direct object of spend. And so this is important to recognize. It's a phrase, which means it needs to move together. Whatever happens to it, they're, they're together, they're stuck together, okay? Now, when we talked about interrogative pronouns, what we learned is that subjects stay put, they don't move, but direct objects do need to be relocated to the very beginning of the sentence. And so that's what we're gonna do with how much, how and its entourage. 
All right. So now we've got how much money did you spend? Or you could just say how much did you spend? The money part can be understood. Obviously spend, right? <laughs> we, we figure you're spending money, right? So how much did you spend? But whether you include it or not, you're not gonna leave money by itself because like I said, that noun phrase has to travel together. Okay, so how much money did you spend? There, I have my question, keeping how and much together. If you were to say many, how many, you're gonna do the same thing because many is also an adjective. How many people did you see? Or if it's understood uh, from the conversation, you could just say, how many did you see? Okay, so actually saying that noun is optional, but the important thing is that the adverb, the adjective, and if you're going to use it, the noun, they all need to go to the very front of the line together. If you say, how many did you see people? It doesn't make any sense, okay? So your question word with all of its buddies goes to the very beginning. And of course, don't forget to switch your verb and your subject to just a reminder. One more here. Did you see them often? So I've got a question. I did the, the switching already there. Did you see them often? Often is not an adjective, it's another adverb, it's an adverb of time. So if I want to ask the question, how often? So did you, did you see them often? Yes or no, right? How often, uh, I'm, I'm looking for more information. Once a week, once a year, never, okay? So I want more information besides just yes or no. Well, it's an adverb. So we're just gonna bring it to the front of the line. We don't have to worry about a noun, an optional noun, okay? So we leave the them there because my adverb often isn't attached to any noun. It's, it had to do with a verb. So how often did you see them? Did you see them often? How often did you see them? Now, let's talk about ever, because I promise you I would last week when we were doing the interrogative pronouns, right? Whoever, whomever, whosoever. Well, actually, ever can attach itself to any of the question words. So we've got whoever, whatever, whichever, whenever, wherever, whyever, and however. But what does it actually do? Well, Ever is a lot like the any and anything, anywhere, etc. that we already talked about with those indefinite pronouns. It emphasizes that I really have no idea who or what or why. I probably don't really care either. It makes the question word extra general. So let's look at some sentences. Whoever could be calling this late? Okay, this is it's three in the morning and I get a phone call. And I don't have the slightest clue who would be that jerky, <laughs> okay? Whoever could be calling this late. There's not a single person who would be that rude, right? Please don't call me at three in the morning. Even worse, don't call me at five in the morning. <laughs> um, so this is the idea, it's extra general. I don't have a clue. I'll help you with whatever you need. Now, this is important to point out. These evers can be used with questions. They can also just be used um, you know, with uh, you know, regular statements as well, you know, with the same effect. You're, you're emphasizing how general something is. So I'll help you with whatever you need, okay? If you want me to wash your cat, I'll do that. If you want me to put a new roof on your house, I'll do that. If you want me to order you pizza, I'll do it as long as you share, okay? So whatever, anything. When do you wanna meet? The person replies, whenever, okay? They're emphasizing, I don't care. Whatever time is good for you. That one you're gonna hear uh, be much more common than whoever, okay? Whenever. 
You'll hear that a lot, okay? When do you want to meet? When do you want to go out? Okay, whatever. Whatever you want. Why ever did you do that? Okay, it's just there for emphasis. Why did you do that? Why ever did you do that? I just, I, I don't understand why you would do something so stupid, okay? So it's that emphasizing. I, I don't have a clue. And one more. However you study, it's important to do a little every day. I don't care. I don't care if you're studying at a desk, on your bed, outside in the park, however you want to do it, okay? All the options are possible. However, of course, uh, is very common, a uh, very common adverb that you see all over the place. So you could say however you study, or you could just say, however, it's important to do a little every day, okay? So there it's kind of used for contrast. Um, you know, I know it's hard to find the time to study, However, it's important to do a little every day. So if it is slightly different when it's used generally, right now we'll just focus on um, here where I'm emphasizing whatever you wanna do, <laughs> however you wanna do it, just do it, okay? I don't care, do whatever you need to do. Finally, I've got one more type of yes or no question for you. And that is the tag question. First of all, what is a tag? You may be wondering. Okay, a tag, there's lots of different types. This is one type. Okay, it's something that's attached to something else. So there might be a tag on your shirt. There's a tag that tells you the price at the store. Lots of different tags. It's something that's added on. Now, tags have to do with our auxiliary verbs. They depend on having some sort of auxiliary, and of course it's subset the modal verb um, to play around with. We have this sentence, you were studying. That's a statement. To make it a tag question, I don't have to move things around. What I actually do is use the negative form of the auxiliary verb. You were studying, weren't you? So I'm looking for a yes or no answer, right? Um, the reason I would ask this question, you were studying, weren't you? Is that I'm expecting a particular answer, okay? I'm expecting that you were studying, I just wanna confirm it for myself. And I might put a little bit of attitude into it. You were studying, weren't you? Where I'm kind of suspicious, Okay, I'm going in and checking on my kids. Are they doing their homework? You were studying, weren't you? Because you were supposed to be. Um, but so you can see the format here, were studying, weren't you, were not, right? So that's the negative form of the auxiliary verb to be. You could say, you are studying, aren't you? He is studying, isn't he? Any form of the verb, but that's the verb that you're gonna make negative. You have studied. You have studied, haven't you? Or you could say, you've studied, haven't you? You've been studying, haven't you been? Okay. How about this one? You studied. There's no auxiliary. What do I do? Remember, you can always use grammatical do. You did study. It means the same thing. You studied, you did study. Okay. So then you use your, mo your auxiliary. You did study, didn't you? Or you studied, didn't you? Whether you used it or not in the original, understand that that do is always there, even if it's invisible, okay? You can study, so now I'm using the modal instead of the, um, the, the helping verb, okay? So you can study. You can study, can't you, right? Or do you need help? You can study, can't you? And how about this one? You will study. You will study, won't you? Uh, the, the negative form of will is a little irregular, so remember that. You will study, won't you? You would study, wouldn't you? So you uh, just focus on those modals, practice them, practice their negative forms, okay? That's how you form a tag question, nice and simple. 
So let's get you practicing. Write me your own questions using whichever strategies you struggle with the most. Remember, writing sentences that are easy may make you feel better about yourself, but they won't help you learn anything. Challenge yourself and send me what you've written, either in the messages or in an email. Good luck. In all seriousness though, please do email me if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Thank you, as always, for watching. Check out more videos at apexlanguages.com and have a happy, healthy, safe rest of your day.